Hello and welcome to a brand new season of International Kuna, the show that takes you through the story of the Nerazzurri game by game, a sort of comfort zone for all the English-speaking Inter fans out there. This year, I'm joined by the only ever case encounter of a football fanatic from Italy trapped in the body of a businessman from Britain, Richard Hall. <laughs> it's good to be back. How are you? Yes, uh, certainly, certainly a good intro there because, yeah, definitely trapped, definitely trapped in a... I'm very misunderstood over here in the UK, let's say that much, but at least I find it at home um, over with you guys in, in Italy. Exactly, but tell, tell me a little bit about why it is that you like Inter and Italian football so much. I mean, you are based in Britain, especially in uh, Preston, that's correct? Exactly. Yeah, just near Preston on the coast. Yeah, it's a bit strange because, uh, yeah, it's a bit of an unusual one. I have mentioned it before once, but it's um, very quickly. My father had no interest in football, but he uh, worked in and out of uh, in and out of Milan. And so when I was a very young boy, eight years old, Italian football was on the TV over in the UK. And I asked him for a shirt and he came back with um, an Inter shirt. And, and that was it. It's for my era, Lothar Mateus and uh, Bremer, Bergami, Zenga, Bertie, Ferry. And that, that was it. And unfortunately, I've, uh, well, fortunately, should I say, uh, yeah, that, that's been it for me ever since. It's good to know. I mean, uh, it's always nice to have you back, of course. And this year we will be obviously going through what happens with the team game by game. Today, of course, we're here to talk about the most recent uh, happenings in what happened, of course, with the Champions League debut at home at San Siro. But I would like to uh, announce what the theme of today's show is, is going to be like. I will call it the enter progression. So what is it that led to what we have witnessed uh, in the last match. So starting from the preseason and going through um, the highlights, I wouldn't say the highlights, but the topic and the, the top moments that built Inter as we see it today from the start of the season. Of course, a tricky season because Inter are trying to defend the title and that's not e an easy task mm -hmm. for a no team. Um, so let's start from the debut at San Siro in the UCL, it was, uh, of course, uh, a tricky match because, I mean, it's always San Siro, it's always yeah. a home game, it's always the UCL against a team that uh, Red Star Belgrade uh, were coming from, you know, leading their table in the Serbian league. Uh, not something easy to do. It's not one of those matches you can underestimate. Uh, um, it went really well. <laughs> Richard? Yeah, it, it did, and I think when you, you, you make two good points there, I think whether it's in a league or in the Champions League, uh, there's expectations on Inter now. You know, when you are, when you, you're champions, people expect even more the next season. Um, and in the Champions League, you know, I think that a lot of people, even outside of Italy, believe that Inter have got a, a really good chance of going all the way. They've certainly got the strength and depth in the squad. Um, and when we had to face uh, Red Star Belgrade, I mean, the, the name Red Star Belgrade brings back memories of the 90s with that side of Stojkovic and Panchev, etc. Um, but they came and they're a, solid, they're a solid outfit. And I think what we saw was Inter stepping up to the plate in the Champions League and, and making a marker. These are games that we're expected to win, especially at home. And I think, the, especially after the goal, first goal went in, Inter were in very much in control. Um, and I think for Inzaghi and, and the players, so the players were on the pitch, uh, there was obviously rotation. And everyone stepped up. And I think it's that strength and depth that's going to keep us going throughout the season. Exactly. That's where we are ending our story for today. I mean, for today. This is the end for today. And I want to go back, take a step back and see where it all started. We started from the pre-season, a pre-season that was really complicated, I would say, because many players had been away for the Euro, a lot of players had been away for uh, their, in, in Argentina as well, so the America's Cup. So, I mean, um, everyone started to join the team here in Apiano Gentile for the training camp, so-called training camp, little by little. And Inzaghi had, of course, to try things out with certain players and then try other things out to other players. So during the friendly matches in the preseason, it, you, you could see that you know, the squad was uh, uh, slowly sort of filling up. Um, then, of course, the debut 
match of the season was against Genoa, a tough ground in Genoa because even last mm. season, in, Inter never came away with the full three points. But what we saw there was something rather spectacular again because we had Turam's first brace. Yeah, absolutely. I was um, I was actually happy uh, after the first game of the season. I mean, obviously we wanted three points. You know, this, there's no question about that. But I think when you look at the pace that Inter played at, um, and you're right, I think we, we can't take away from the atmosphere that the Luigi Ferraris, you know, the Genoa fans are, are absolutely fantastic and it's a difficult place to go. And we've had uh, some trouble, even if you go back to the 90s and uh, that ground. But the Inter's response here was, was brilliant. And with a few of the refereeing decisions, again, could have been maybe even, uh, you know, three points. But I think, like you say, Turam, to be, especially when you're talking about players being away at the Euros and the Copa America, um, you know, for, for Turam especially to come off the back of that, looking as sharp as he did, um, it, it's, it alleviates so much pressure when you've got a goal scorer in form straight away. Um, again, you know, Inter strengthened well. Like you say, players have had to come back at different times. But Inter look like a unit there, and being a unit isn't always just winning. It's a coming back against adversity as well, and I think that's what they did really well in this game. What kind of a centre forward do you think Turam is? It's an interesting one because I think his game's adapting. I think we saw, if you look at when Lasaro first came over um, and to Inter, you know he's a different player now than he was then, and I think we're seeing that with Turam. I think he's gone from someone who's just, uh, you know, obviously got the, the quick turn of pace. I think he's becoming into a more a more natural finisher. Um, I think his runs are getting more and more intelligent. And again, I've said it before, but Lautaro just seems to be able to forge a partnership with anyone he plays with. And this is just a new version, again, that's continuing. So, Turan, for me, um, you know, he's not going to play in anyone's shadow. But again, he's a very unselfish player as well. Um, and I just feel that, you know, he, he's going to have his own personal targets this season so far. You know, it looks like he's going to be certainly up there and way above double figures by the looks of it. Exactly. So from, uh, from Genoa Inter, we saw Turam uh, having an excellent start to the season. But then, of course, Barella on the assist. And Barella is going to be one of the men to watch. Now, of course, we haven't seen him in the last couple of games because he's out for injury. But in the whole process of building Inter, as we see today, he's been a critical, a crucial point, I would say. Um, Taremi debuted on that occasion as well, um, a new player for mm -hmm. Inter. Um, what, what are your thoughts so far on him, even from the, that first game against Genoa? I think he gives Inzaghi options in the sense of tactically. I think that he gives an option to, if he needs to, to go to three up front, which is something that obviously we've not seen uh, a massive amount um, over the past seasons. I think as well, I think with someone like Taremi, um, you've got a player there who's got a great work rate, a good engine, if for want of a better word. You know, he's willing to drop deep and pick up the ball. It, it, you, you know, when you look at his record, it, there may be an assumption for those who haven't seen too much of him that he would be a player who'd just be more focused on, you know, obviously poaching and spending a lot of time in the box, but he doesn't. Um, and I think that when you have a team that, you know, collectively is working as a group and have had them for some time, someone who can come in and, and show that straight away that he's going to have that same... Ethic and, and he's almost um, managed to get into that culture of the club straight away, um, and I think I think that's really important for the group. And uh, I, I, yeah, I think he's going to. We've always had to have that striker, which you, sometimes people have said he's almost like a third striker, if you would. But I think he's a bit more than that. I think he's come here to do, you know, not just uh, play second fiddle, but be a really important part of the team. And, and we're seeing that so far. Exactly. So if we mo move on into the first home game of the season, Inter Lecce ended up 2-0 for Inter, of course. Um, we see Taremi again as uh, there in the place where he should be, assisting Darmian in the goal. And again, we see how he completely understood the role where he has to be available in that spot, in that area where, where uh, a chance comes by. And I had the chance to talk to him uh, the first interviews we did here at the club when he first joined. And uh, like you said, uh, he's, uh, he's got in full the spirit of uh, Enta, so the group, the bonding that uh, this team really requires and really infuses to all the players. And we're just going to listen to Meditaremi on his first words uh, here as an Azzurro. 
And we got it. Important, Mar? Uh, important thing in football, it's a dressing room. The players have to be like a brother together. They have to die for each self. They have to fight for each self because during the year, we always read. Maybe we see each other more than the family. And because of that, we have some emotional thing together, some uh, some good thing, bad things. But uh, if we stay so together, uh, the team can be like champion each year. So that's so important for the sports. That's the spirit of the team that he is, uh, I think, is uh, build, building with him now because he's getting to be more and more a part uh, of Inzaghi's squad. Uh, and like you said, there are there's plenty of opportunities uh, for all the players this year with a lot of um, of games. So we'll get into that just in a minute. Match day three, Atalanta, home game as well, mm. and we got four goals in. Um, I mean, again, to Rams brace, and that could have been uh, three goals. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts again on uh, to Ram, but also all the team, how they contributed to? Uh, facing a side that uh, Atalanta this year probably still in that pre-season uh, sort of uh, end and start of the league in August, you know, we still call it last summer football. Uh, they still were adapting to the new uh, new players they had and the changes in the team. And Inter were doing pretty much the same, to be fair, because like we said, the pre-season was just finished. But how, what uh, what's your take on to Ram again and the whole team mm. in that game. I think that when you look at the players we just spoke about, Sarimi, Delinsky that's come in, you're looking at players who are quite mature um, and quite obviously intelligent players as well. And they're not wanting to, to rock the, the the mood of the group. And I think when integrating new players, sometimes it can be quite difficult, especially if there's a lot of new players come in. I think Inter have obviously got the solid base. Um, obviously, like I said, I was actually quite happy with the performance against Genoa. Always worry when we play uh, Lecce or teams like that because we have to break them down, but we did well. Then coming up against Atalanta with a real test. I mean, we can't you can't speak high enough sometimes of Atalanta and the way they play, but this was Inter just decimating them and uh, at, at home as well. It was real. For me, it was a statement um, that Inter were getting off the mark and there was players in that team you know that that, that were coming in potentially tired a little bit you know that they knew that it was going to be difficult but to play with that intensity early on after everything you just said um you know yeah you could see that lacking with atalanta in, in some ways that transition of getting back into the season understanding the new players the new roles but into uh, and then to them i mean look he's obviously playing with confidence um, but you could see, and I think even in the highlights now, you can see that players are, are gesticulating and asking and pointing to, to where they want players to be. Everyone knows their job, and I think that's the key point. And it showed. And, and, and look, you know, I know that the English press always call it Inzaghi ball at the moment, and it, it certainly was. It's the nearest things we've got to it this season, and it was a, it was a fantastic result. And, you know, these big games, it doesn't matter when it comes, at the beginning of the season, at the end of the season, you've got to win them if you're going to, go to win the title. And um, Atalanta is certainly one of those teams to beat. And we did that and, and then some. And of course, we saw celebrating with Turan there, Barella, who had probably what, you know, you kind of tend to forget as the season goes on what happened before that, before the goals that you just seen in the match that just happened. Mm. But Barella there, his goal was just... Uh, Astounding, I would say. Uh, you know, one of those goals that uh, sends the fans to the roof. Uh, what can you tell me about that goal? Yeah. I, uh, for me, I don't, I don't like comparing players, especially in past eras. But I mentioned him at the beginning that Lothar Mateus was one of my favourite players, and Barella often reminds me of that, uh, having that dynamism and that, that, that just technique and the speed. I mean, th this is just unbelievable. I mean. That that strike is, you know, he makes it look so easy. And, I mean, he hits it like Lothar Mateus and celebrates right like Ricardo Fetti. It was it was an incredible... Uh, sorry, Nicola Berti, not Ricardo Fetti. It was an incredible strike. Um, I think the thing about Bernada, yes, he's got these moments in him. Of course he has. And you can, you can look at them and be so engaged in that. And that's what brings the emotion out when you see moments like that. But realistically, it's everything else that he does. And it's his complete work race. And the fact that, you know, it, it sometimes he can 
whilst he can produce moments like this, 10 minutes later, he will be on the edge of his own penalty box, taking the ball in difficult situations under pressure. And I think when you talk about people who lead by example, by example I think Barella is probably one of the best at that. Um, and for, for me, even going back years now, his maturity just stands out. And um, like I said, the technique for that goal was essentially one of the goals of the season already. Exactly. But, you know, when uh, we are here during the pre-season training and we spent quite some time with the players because we produce some of the content that, that we are <clears throat> spread around the season, Barella uh, is one of the most energetic people out here. He's so full of energy during a training session, out here <clears throat> with, uh, with the people around the staff. Is just full of, jet of energy. It's a spring, you know, if we can say that in English. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I admire him from that. He's one of those, it reminds me of a kid who can't, you know, just, uh, he never shuts up or shuts off, sorry. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> no. I think that's one of his secrets, uh, one of his many secrets uh, on the pitch, that he can just has the, the charisma, the, the skills, of course, but it's just, he's never still on the pitch. Have you noticed that? Mm. Absolutely, and yeah. that... I mean, in England, uh, they call it the, the Duracell bunny. You know, it's a, <laughs> there was someone who just had the batteries in them and it never stops. And, it, and I get that. And it, it, like when you say him around the, the training ground and having that charisma and that, is that it, the enthusiasm mixed with the want to win and, and having the, not just the technique, but the ability to, to do that. And I, I go back to saying leading by example, and it's not just leading by example in his position, it's taking control of, of the game. And it's... There's lots of players with an immense amount of talent, but someone who can actually change the pace of the game, um, I think is rare, especially in, in the modern game. Um, but he's, he, he can do that no problems at all. Um, and, and he has the ability to calm the tempo, which we've seen, uh, which I'm sure we'll talk about against uh, Manchester City, um, and calm the game down. So, you know, it, it's that, again, goes back to the intelligence, but again, again it takes a special player with a special uh, ability to do that. But yeah, um, I wish I knew where he got that energy from because trust me, I could do with some. Uh, before we get to Manchester City, obviously the Monza Inter game uh, was sort mm. of um, a pre in preparation of Man Manchester City. I mean, um, Manchester City, the debut in the Champions League, it was obviously v crucial for Inter and probably um, Monza Inter was a sort of prelude to what happened to what was going to happen. So I'm not saying that we're saving energy, but of course on your mind you have such a, a crucial game because you're, you're on this, uh, in this big um, show, is a big show, is a big stage and you want to perform well. Uh, luckily, um, in the end, Zielinski had his debut there, uh, came, off, uh, came on for, for Miki Tano, the 56, and uh, Denzel Dumfries managed the goal as well. Um, so we could still do what we do best, which is to, to manage to do what we want in a game, but probably yeah. not the way we really want it, which is what we managed to do against Manchester City. Now, let's talk about a little bit the new format of the Champions League. Um, first of all, I kind of like the idea of having this many teams, this many uh, this league, league phase with oh, everyone against each other, with the uh, goal difference counting as well. I kind of like the idea, and I kind of like seeing different teams coming and joining this big stage that I was referring to. So, of course, we during this league phase, we have the 36 teams facing each other, and there was a draw uh, a few weeks back. And uh, Inter, of course, have done now two matches, two round, two matches of the first um, mm. of this league phase. Against Man City, uh, the anticipation was really, really high for the game because, of course, uh, Man City, we go back to the memories of uh, the final um, back in Istanbul. And, of course, as Inzaghi said himself, um, there's no um, redemption time, there's no anger. We just want to you know, do well and show that uh, we can face any team that we want. And having said that, I want to show you What's the anticipation that we lived uh, with, with in the first in the few days ahead of the game with our video hero? Once a year, when the magic begins, fantasy becomes reality, and new tales are ready to be lived. 
These are stories where anything can happen. Where destiny takes shape. And duels become legendary. That moment is now. Time of Champions has come. Goosebumps there. Intermedia House always producing great stuff. And uh, if you're a footballer and you watch that video, I guess you, you get a bit of, uh, you know, nerves rising through, <laughs> uh, I guess. And what a game it was against Man City. Uh, also away from home i mean it was even if it was a goalless match it was still a great um show of football i think and uh the main protagonist was inter as inter the, the inter that we saw last season uh they've gone out on the pitch with confidence trying to play their football despite the fact that they were up against probably one of the best if not the best team out there in europe uh and also former rivals, if you think about the UCL final back two years ago. And we managed to do what we wanted to do. We weren't afraid to, to create chances. We defended really well. And the men on the pitch did the job that they had to do. There was one man in particular, and it's, of course, Barella again. <laughs> we call him the box-to-box -box man. Isn't that right, Richard? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think as well, uh, that game against uh, Manchester City, you know, the English media obviously, well, not obviously, but do often, um, they're very, very England-centric, should we say. And it was so interesting, the praise that Inter got in the English media was uh, quite incredible. Uh, well, not incredible for me, because we saw it, and uh, the way, obviously, they did defend and took the game to Manchester City at times as well. But it was more about the, the calmness at the, at the back. The fact that there were some really short triangles that they were passed around really calmly when they were under immense pressure in a very, very uh, important game against an extremely good team, as we know. And, and Inter performed well and I think went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Um, I've not seen Manchester City be so stunned, in a sense, um, and not be able to press, not have that uh, second idea of what they can do. And it's not often that you say that against Pep Guardiola's teams that he seemed to look out of ideas by about 70 minutes. So it was an incredible performance uh, against, obviously, like you said, a very good team. And Barella especially, like I said, I referred to it before, the fact that he was coming back into his own box and almost running those passages of play. Uh, and the whole the whole back line, especially as well, Jan Sommer, you know, you, you look at the calmness with his his passing out from the back. It was It was exemplary. And um, I think that what Inter showed there was a very cultured defensive display and um, something that I know that in the UK we're not actually very used to seeing. Yeah, it's uh, Guardiola that called it itself, himself the Italian way of defending. And he said that before the game. So he was kind of prepared. He was expecting that to ha happen, you know, with Bastoni doing an incredible job. And uh, his main man, Erling Haaland, being stopped by Acerbi every single time. And obviously, you can't just man mark because that doesn't get you much on, on a game against Man City. You have to play the ball. You have to move on the pitch. You can't just uh, look at uh, the main man for the top scorer, Man City and just to mark him, you've got to play the ball. And that's what happened because Barella, Zielinski, as soon as there was a mistake in the excellent passing by Man City, they could just pick up the ball and run yeah. and, and uh, create uh, incredible things. Uh, of course, maybe, you know, uh, this came, came up, of course. We could have been more cynical and we could have actually took the win, but uh, you know, you can't, it's not easy. I'm not a footballer, I don't know what happens there if uh, you could take that chance or not. Maybe my visual from watching the game is not the same visual as the players have. That's impossible to judge. You were there at the stadium, actually, weren't you? 
Yeah, he was, he was. I mean, the atmosphere at Manchester City, for those who don't know, um, and this is not being derogatory, isn't always the greatest. And I think that probably played into Inter's hands a little bit because they've got a very interesting um, relationship with the Champions League, Manchester City. But I think that uh, with this game, you, you, one of the interesting things about it is that, like you say, yeah, Inter could have potentially uh, taken this game. I think that that will show other teams in the in the Champions League moving forward. That you know you can't really mess about when you play into. Secondly, just go back to that defensive aspect again. I think when we were talking about Barella coming into the box, what was good about that? It allowed the defense to to go a little bit wider. And then Bastoni, as you mentioned, I mean his range of passing is just off the charts good, and um, it allowed them then to to release the play. And I think Manchester City got caught in that idea of when they saw the balls that were being played over and through when they were pressing, they were very conscious of being caught on the counter. Um, and, you know, we've seen some examples there. Um, with Mickey, you know, that, that could have easily easily gone in. And I think if Inter had have got a goal, they would have um, still kept the clean sheet. That's true. And uh, that gave us plenty of confidence, I think. And uh, we had the derby, the derby after that, the City derby as hosts. And that's obviously a tough game to play straight after the Champions League. Uh, obviously, we came away from from England with a boost of confidence and we felt that we had a lot of chances, but probably more chances than AC Milan. AC Milan came there with a lot of anger, with a lot of, it's an all or nothing kind of situation with the, you know a lot of criticism going around, their new coach Fonseca. And of course, the derbies, as Inzaghi himself said, and a lot of players said, the derby are a matter of uh, mental approach and sometimes, you know, the way you find energies that you don't have, you find skills that maybe you don't have or you have just in rare moments all throughout the seasons, they might come to you on that day. And that day wasn't our day, unfortunately. It was a tough defeat to take. I was there at the stadium and despite what happened, I'm, you know, I, I, it was a great show of football again and I'm... It's a great experience to be there and watch mm. that uh, still. Um, what's been said as well by Inzaghi after the game, and that's something I totally agree with, is something very, very positive, a positive attitude. He, he, can, he seems always very calm and uh, um, composed about his opinions on negative and positive aspects of certain games. He said... Now, okay, obviously today wasn't our day, but we want to take all the positives of what we've done today on the pitch and take it alongside with us for the next games. And I think we can just uh, listen to him to what he said after the derby. Si riparte con eh, con tanto lavoro, quindi cercheremo di analizzare bene, lavoreremo con eh, con ancora <laughs> più concentrazione perché chiaramente ora ci brucia aver perso un derby chiaramente però come ho detto prima a volte bisogna prendere anche le cose le cose positive da una sconfitta come questa purtroppo in questo momento se ne vede poco ma da domani cominceremo a lavorare con testa ludinese e testa tutti i nostri impegni and Jan Sommer as well was, is somebody who always have the right things to say. Jan Sommer in that match, despite uh, you know, all the criticism that Inter might have received from all over, you know, not us for sure, but uh, you, this is what happens when you lose uh, an important match like that. Jan Sommer did a great save and he was a man that uh, still at this season, again, is proving to be um, a rock, sort of rock solid point of Inter, isn't that? Oh, massively. I said this last season. For me, um, <coughs> excuse me, he's almost, uh, I like tennis analogies, he's like the Federer of goalkeeping for me because everything he does is just so, he's uh, got, he's very classy. He, he seems very eloquent and um, it seems almost effortless. And, and it, but it isn't. I mean, this is a guy, you know, who's positioning, he's fantastic. Um, you know, he's he's forever ready, for every cop, forever calm. I mean, you can see those reflexes are, are just fantastic and he's been such an important part of this uh, team the fact that he can play you know out from back with his feet 
Um, you know, and in, and in such a big game, he never seems phased. And, and we know this, that that always relates to the, the back three, the back four, whatever that might be. Um, he's not, you know, you don't see him being always hugely vocal. And the back, the back line and the defence, they trust him. And, and that allows, that's such an important role for that to happen because it allows the, the back line to then be more confident and play out a little bit more, take maybe a few more risks, which is always one of the starts of our passage of play under Inzaghi. So we should definitely, you know, always appreciate the, the role that Jan Sommer does, not just about the saves, those magnificent saves like we just saw, but his all-round game, all game play. Exactly. And if we think about this, the title of today's show, like I call it, the Inter's Progression, Let's remind us that Sommer said something really important just before the game against Man City, something that then we should remember this season and is the memory also of what happened last season. He said this thing about um, something that he noticed as soon as he joined Enter, that everyone defends the goal as if there was a baby inside it. And we just, uh, we're just going to listen to him uh, saying this. I came to Inter last year and... Um then I, I saw the things I saw in this final as well. Um, this courage, um, everybody defend their own goal like like there is a baby inside, or like yeah, it's it's really like this. It feels like <laughs> it feels like this. So, and and um, this imp this impressed me. The courage, the quality, um, like this emotional game on the pitch. Everybody for for everybody. Um, to yeah to to be successful and I saw that last last season it was um, how I said um, we we defend our goal um, with everything we had we we had a lot of quality with with the ball um, yeah power energy um, good mood on the pitch and um, yeah this is Inter nice. So this is Inter, power, energy, and good mood on the pitch. I mean, I, I'd like to play football if this is what it is <laughs> <laughs> or not. I mean, Jan Sommers surely had the best words before that Man City uh, game. And I think that he, that's what Inter has to remember every time they go out and play football. And I think that's exactly what they remember when they traveled to Udine and played against Udinese. I mean, in their heart, they still have the memory of the last game against Udinese, which was back in April, it was match day 31st of the, the league. And we had the late goal by Frattesi and we won the game, of course, and we got there. And instead of scoring in the last minute, Frattesi managed to score in the first 43 seconds of the game, something that has never happened this season in the Serie A. That was just uh, three steps go. It was probably a bit of, uh, you know, somebody wasn't careful, wasn't watching him, but, uh, you know, <laughs> you can't say he was lucky. He was still, he, he does what he does best. See the space, sees the opportunity, and just runs through like a mad horse and uh, shots it right <laughs> in, the, in the net. Um, Lautaro, somebody we haven't really mentioned so far, and it's not really fair we haven't, of course, I'm bringing him up now because Udinese, he scored. And uh, that's, of course, what you want your captain and your top, sc top scorer to do uh, as a player. But Lautaro is not only that. And, of course, um, the issue, let's say, that he had so far in the season is that he joined the team uh, probably last, was the last man to join the team because, of course, um, his time on uh, an international duty back in Argentina. And now he's back to his uh, scoring habits, and we're all, we're all really happy about that. What do you make of uh, the Udinese win after, of course, the tough defeat against AC Milan? Yeah, once I managed to take my breath. Um, yeah, it was crazy, but it was brilliant. Um, I mean, just a couple of things just to, to elaborate on there. You know, Jan Sommer talking about defending. I mean, we look at Di Marco when he... Um, clears that one, uh, you know, his, his reaction almost like celebrating like it was a, a goal really goes down to agree with what Summer was mentioning. Um, you know, he's been fantastic himself this season and, you know, that, that real want to, to keep the ball out and to, and to progress has been a, a real mark this season of uh, Inter's mentality. Look, the game wasn't perfect, we know that, and it, but it was really important, the result, because obviously, like you say, coming off the back, there's a disappointment in the derby, but 
this game, um, difficult place to go. Um, and yeah, after Fratesi, for me, I, I really enjoy watching Fratesi because he's just so direct. He's, um, I, I always feel like he has a goal in him. Um, I just feel that like he knows what he wants and he's got good awareness of what's around him. And he's, he's, he's an incredible asset to the team. And I think that, you know, even though Inter, yes, of course, there was goals conceded, but again, it's like the comeback in Genoa. It's like the fact that even though Monza didn't go particularly to plan, it was a draw there. They came back. Again, here, it was, there was fights all the way through. And things aren't going to be perfect all season, especially, like you say, with Lotaro coming back and being jaded, especially the way he plays. He gives so much for all of his teammates, whether it's from international duty or his club team. Um, for me, I was just really pleased for him to get amongst the goals because obviously that position is a confidence position. And uh, now we've seen what's happened since then. You know, he's, he's carried that on. Um, so it was it was a really good result. It was uh, an entertaining game if you were neutral. Um, a bit of a heart attack for me at some points, but um, I was uh, I was really happy with it. And again, it's the spirit of the players. And uh, there, there we go. You know, Demarco, just incredible. Uh, Love that celebration. When, he, when he's defending like that. And you just feel that, that that's there. Like Soma said, the team's ready to fight. Udinese also knocked out Salernitana in the Coppa Italia. So we will see them again in round of 16 um, soon, in December. Uh, some stats about that game as well. Lautaro Martinez uh, has scored most multiple goals in an away match since his debut in Serie A back in the 2018-29 season. A total of 10 goals. And also, Turam assist was his fifth that he provided for Lautaro in Serie A. So, we started off the progression of Inter with Turam scoring not one brace, two braces. <laughs> <laughs> and then also his contribution is the, 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 with the, the combination with him and Lautaro, which is something that uh, last season, of course, was uh, crucial in the whole campaign that got us to the Scudetto and um, the second star, of course. And Udinese, uh, with Udinese, of course, we saw uh, Lautaro finally unlocking it, which, you know, um, it's not such so important to, to score, but for him to do it mentally probably gave him a little bit of a help of uh, being more, to have more freedom on the pitch, to have that so sort of relief that you need to have when you are the captain yeah. and top scorer. Um, after Udinese, of course, back in the Champions League, and that's we are up to now, first Champions League game on home soil against uh, uh, Red Star Belgrade. And at the beginning of the game, I was uh, a bit afraid that, you know, it's uh, a game again, very close to the weekend, 72 hours just after the match yeah. against Udinese, and you don't know what, what happened, but Inzaghi was really good in um, uh, the turnover. So he had seven, seven different players on, on the pitch with Arnautovic and Taremi as uh, his attack. And uh, that, you know, so many chances created. It was unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. I was a little worried at one point. Um, just to, like you say, the turnaround time was quick. But also as well, um, I thought that Red Star would come here to get a point. And combining those two situations, I thought they were going to play really deep and <clears throat> make it difficult. And I think obviously, you know, when Hakan does what Hakan <laughs> does, which was incredible, just absolutely magical free kick, you could almost sense the, the wind coming out of the Red Star sails. Um, and you you just felt that they didn't really have an answer to that. It felt for me, and maybe I'm wrong, I'm no coach, I'm no you know, um, expert in that sense, but you just felt like they had one main plan, and that was to stop into playing and to, to make this a difficult game. Uh, and once the first goal went in, I think that both teams realised that, you know, it wasn't potentially going to be the war of attrition that Inter may have been concerned about. Um, because as I don't know, maybe uh, I'd love to know from a player's perspective, but I'm sure when you watch your teammate or you do something like that, you must be thinking, this is our night tonight. Because, you know, moments like that, you know, they're made for the Champions League, aren't they? So, um, yeah, it was, it was a fantastic result. And I think if you add that up against 
the result uh, against Manchester City, as we go back to saying, I think that, you know, especially with the, in both games, the, the, the turnaround of players, which we keep continually going back to, Inter are a force on all competitions because they have the ability to put players in like Tellini, like um, Arna, and this is what happens, you know, they're, they're on the score sheet and uh, Inter keep moving forwards. Yeah, Akan Shalanoglu now is the man of obviously the set pieces. He's already got 17 goals uh, from uh, the 12 yards and now, of course, scoring from a free kick and what a shot that was. I, I was watching it from home last night, uh, the other night, and I said, you know, you just scream at the television at that point when that happens. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's the, I like seeing... It's obviously the man to go when you want to have the ice cold personality who can just forget about everything and take that shot and just right there in the corner through the keeper. The keeper couldn't do anything about it, even if he wanted to, I believe. But man of the match or player of the match by the UEFA was actually Meditaremi. Meditaremi, again, last night, the other night, was uh, in the action right there where he needed to be. He was picking up the ball as soon as he had the chance, right from the box, mm. assisting, two assists and one goal. And, of course, uh, bonding with the team because when you assist for the man, Arnautovic, or, you know, it, is, it just comes to you that I'm more natural to bond with them. But <laughs> I'm so glad that even if he had to wait uh, such a long time for, to take his penalty the other night, he was still able to focus and you know to get the chance you know you have one shot one opportunity <laughs> to make your first goal at enter take it and he took it i was really afraid because he had to wait for such a long time there was a technical issue for the referees yeah. i guess they couldn't hear each other and i was just uh, hoping that that wouldn't like set him off and uh, and pull it you know pull it um, and distract him from doing what Chala probably does, uh, knows uh, how to do best, even in these situations. Lautaro yes. gave him the chance, gave him the ball and said, uh, OK, you take this penalty and uh, man of the match or player of the match, as they call him. So do you think Taremi can be, from now on, um, somebody that the team can count on? In, in what aspect? In because he is obviously a centre forward, but he's, we have said that he has got a different kind of positioning, a different kind of is assisting, but also, you know, being the man, he should be scoring goals. Yeah, completely. I think he's got a lot to his game. Um, he's certainly got, from, you know, at least I've seen the, the man play many times before, but I think you focus obviously a lot more when the, you're watching him week in, week out, and he's got more to his game than I actually imagined, I think. You know, it's that selflessness and, um, you know, you saw Lataro self-sacrifice the penalty for him and that was a great gesture. I think that, you know, he will be among, amongst the goals, of course, and I think that what you've got is a player that is not, as I said at the beginning, not necessarily someone who's just a third or fourth choice striker. This is someone I think is going to get a lot of minutes this season, again, because he could potentially play uh, in a three up front, of course, um, but obviously it's a long season. And I think to have the quality to deputise for Lataro or for um, for Turam, you know, it says a lot about him. And he's got that experience. We know he can finish. We know he's got the goal scoring record uh, in in his past. And you know, he looks like he's integrated into the team really well, as you mentioned. Um, and if he keeps assisting like that, he's going to make himself a lot of friends. But that's that's the sort of thing you do need. You need someone who's going to. Um, Sorry, how do you to... how do you make friends in life? Uh, I just assist. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, that's, that's otherwise I'd be alone. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, that's it. You know, it's uh, <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's um, lots of people are going to like him if he keeps doing it. But let's, um, no, he's an asset. Let's hear what he said about how proud he was after the game, after providing two assists and scoring a goal. Meditaremi. I'm so glad about that and uh, thank you of the, our teammate to help me and we did a great job tonight and we know it about the game it's it's tough game because they stay on the block down and uh, as a the beginning of the game uh, we could score and it was great to open the game a little bit and we create the chances and we couldn't use first half and second half we could uh, uh, use our chances better and we scored 
and about my goal, yeah, I'm so glad about that. Inter are unbeaten in their last 10 home games in the Champions League, eight wins and two draws. The longest home run in the competition since February 2009 and November 2010. Thank you also to, to Meditaremi. Next up, we have a match very soon against Torino. Torino have been top of the league and now they've just not been knocked down a little bit in position, but they have been really good this season. They have an excellent start of the season. We mm -hmm. have, uh, they have an old face for, as a coach in the guidance. So uh, Paolo Vanoli, who has been uh, at Inter as well in the technical staff under Conte and then moved on to Chelsea. Always with, always with Conte. And, uh, and then last season, it took uh, Venezia to uh, being promoted in the top tier. So Torino, not a match to underestimate, of course. Uh, we're still at home at San Siro. Uh, and the last time we were at home against Torino at San Siro, do you remember what happened, when it was? The last game against Torino. Uh, I guess it was, uh, the last game, it was on the 26th of April, 2024. Yeah. And we had yeah. already won the Scudetto. We had yeah. already had, uh, on the 22nd of April, we had uh, mathematically won the Scudetto thanks to the win and the derby. And then the yeah. week after, because we were playing as host against Torino, there was the, that insane party. So that happened, obviously. And that game, we took the win with the Chalanoglu's brace as well. And so we have good memories from that. And I think... We're just going to uh, be in for a good one again. What are your thoughts uh, on that? Yeah, I hope so. I think Torino have looked good this season. Um, I think they're a team... They remind me a little bit of um, Atalanta about five years ago when they st first started to really um, look quite organised and, and, and really starting to progress. And I think the, the, reason, the reason I made that comparison is because at that time... Atalanta had a squad that was very much playing for each other and a lot of interchangeable players um, that, you know, if you moved the right back, you moved the centre back, you switched them, it wouldn't really matter. And I think that the Manuel has got that sort of um, team going. Che Adams has been a bit of a surprise um, for Toro. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're well organised, but I don't think they've got the, the depth to go, um, you know, on a, on a long run for it, unfortunately, for them. Um, I've, I've, I've always, I always feel we do well against Torino. Maybe that's because I've been to some games where I'm going, you know, even back to one of my favourite games when we won the Scudetto, and I was uh, in the stands for that one, uh, 2006-07, won three 0 I think it was goals from Mykon and Figo, and I um, forget now. Then he's too many games to go, but uh, always got fond memories of uh, Torino turning up at San Siro. So uh, maybe it's my. Um, just a, my, my internal bias that makes us feel that we won't, won't have a problem with this game. Well, I say we'll have a problem. I think we'll get a result. But, um, yeah, it's not going to be it's not gonna be completely easy because they have, like I said, been good this season and very well organised. Well, let's not forget that, of course, Inter have a, a many fixtures to play. Um, with the new format of the Champions League, of course, there are, are plenty of matches, more matches to play. 36 teams instead of 32 in this league phase. And Torino don't have that. Uh, of course, you have the Coppa Italia as well, the Super Cup, and then there will be the Club World Cup as well mm. later on in the year. So there's going to be many fixtures. And, but Inzaghi, again, showed that uh, he's up for the job. He said, I take this um, calendar as an opportunity for us um, to play football and is an, an opportunity for us to profit as well. So we shouldn't hide behind it. So I'm happy and I have my, a team that uh, I can count on. I actually have you know, two, three players for each role. So obviously it has to, uh, to have a plan, an overall plan, but he said it's going to take things game by game, depending on how the players feel, how uh, obviously if, that, if it has players that are not available for any health reasons, uh, injuries and so on. So it takes things game by game in mind of what it has to do in order to get through to of course, the first uh, matches of the Champions League that will end in uh, January 29th, and we will know if we go st straight through uh, or not. And uh, so far, how do you like this inter-progression, Richard? 
Yeah, absolutely. And again, I go back to saying that you mentioned then, you know, three players for every, every position. The modern game demands that because of the fixture, fixture schedule, like you say. We'll use an example of Manchester City because we've just spoken about them, but often you can see Pep Guardiola lining up. And yeah, there's certain players, maybe like Haaland, that he wants to play every game if he can. But there's often two, three of their main players won't be won't be playing in a game and he'll, he'll pick and choose and rotate. And those players have to be used to that. And I think that the players who are in the squad feel valued because they know they're going to get minutes. It's not going to be the same set 11 all season. I'm sure, you know, in, in the big games, there is obviously Inzaghi knows who's best 11, of course. But we've talked about players like Tarimi, we've talked about players like Fratesi, Echerbi, players who can turn up and, you know, and perform at, at the top level. And I think that must spread a huge... Um, it spreads a good mood around the club, absolutely, because, again, players know that they're going to be called on at any moment. So they have to be and they have to train in... In, in peak condition at all times. Um, you know, there's no players hiding there thinking, look, oh, I'm not going to be picked for the next couple of weeks, so I don't need to need to put the effort in. Nobody knows at the moment when they're going to be called on. And so, into, you know, it's a credit to the club that the squad they have. And at the moment, like I said, no, not every result is perfect, but there's been fighting every game and every player who's been asked has, has fought for the shirt and, and, and played exceptionally well. So Inter will face Torino this Saturday, um, a San Siro in front of the home fans, and then we'll be in another international break. So we'll probably catch things up after that. And it's been a pleasure as well to talk to you, Richard, having you here on the show. And uh, I'm sure you guys enjoyed this presence as much as I did. No, listen, thank you. It's uh, brilliant to be doing the show with you this season. It's uh, great to be back. And uh, it's always good discussing Inter and I'm looking forward to many more shows this season. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. See you next time.